So hey guys, <clears throat> it's Dave here. Just going to give you a quick idea of how I make my pipe stands. So we'll start with the tool that I use for cutting the strips. And this is a craft tool. And there's the cat. She comes in. So what I do is I take a piece of leather. This is a 9 ounce scrap of leather. And there's a blade in this thing that's going to cut my strip. So I feed it in with great care and due diligence and try not to frig it up too bad. And I pull a strip off. So, set that aside. So now we have strip of leather. Hi cat. Next thing I do is I figure out where center is by folding it, marking the ends. Now, change surfaces, put a decent cutting surface down, and I got to figure out what kind of tail I want on it. And this is, you know, whatever you like. I'm going to go just with a kind of a curvy tail. And let me tell you, this leather is thick. And you have to be careful to hold it still as you cut. it really helps if your knife is sharp. This particular blade is about done. But to give you some idea, I mean, that's, that's thick leather. So, we've cut the, uh, the ends. So it'll look... The end will look a bit like that. Now, next thing we need to do decide about the embellishments. So go back to the granite base and we will take a groover and this has got a little grooving blade in it right here. It's, it's for marking sewing seams but I'm going to use it for decoration. And you may or may not be able to see this very well but I'm just cutting Nice neat strip off. That's just going to give me a little decoration. I'll do the other side. Try and pay attention to what I'm doing. I see I made a little mess there. But you can go over it a couple of times. Okay. So we've made a couple of nice little streaks in it. Next thing I want to know is top and bottom. I always like the curve to be on the top. I like it to sit like that. So I'm going to bevel the top edge. And to do that, I'm using a, a beveling tool. I got to sharpen it. I got a little strop hanging up here. You can't see it, but it's just a flap of leather with some jeweler's rouge on it. Shine the bottom of that up. I'm going to cut. A groove. All along the edge. Takes a very satisfying strip off. I'm going to do the other side. The flesh side is never as nice. That's okay. So we've cut a little bevel on the edge. So the next thing we're going to do is think about stamping it. And to do that I'm going to get it wet. Give me a second. I got a bucket of water beside me so I'll go ahead and get it wet. That water is really cold. It does not take long. It's wet. 
Now I'm going to dry it. Get a paper towel, dry it off. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to try doing some stamping on it. So let me get my stamps. I have several to choose from. I found one little stamp. I can find it again. Shaped like a bit like a scallop. And I'm going to stamp scalloped edges all the way to the middle. Turn around and go the other way. <clears throat> so I need to find the middle. I'm going to fold it in half. Take the stamp and just give it a very light mark. And I can see that. You can't, but I can. And I'm going to start stamping. And this is boring. And I'm just tapping in the marks. Trying to stay between the lines, look at the camera at the same time. Not working very well. But it's okay. It's kind of cathartic. Just hitting things with a hammer. Who cares if it works out or doesn't? It really doesn't matter. Because all you're doing is making something Wow, I really messed this up, but that's okay. I think it was Bob Ross, the painter from PBS. It's like, there's no accident. Happy accidents. Yeah, that's what I'm having. Having a lot of happy fucking accidents. So I hit the center point, coming back the other way in the opposite direction, just to provide some visual interest. I don't know. I am no good at stamping. I am by no means an expert at this craft. I don't have the patience for it. I don't have the eyesight for it. I should be wearing my glasses, but I'm not. But I have managed to stamp in a bunch of marks. Now I'm going to fold it in half look at it and it's time to this edge remember we beveled the edge here we're going to treat that so I'm, I'm going to stretch this out a little bit because it's wet leather will stretch when it's wet you can make it do all kinds of fun things so I need to there it is <clears throat> I cannot pronounce this stuff but Tag uh, Canto gum? I don't know. I just put it on my finger. Put a liberal amount on your finger. And I'm going to dress the edge. And when you get good leather products and you have nice clean edges all dressed, it's because they took the time to do this step. And it is quite lovely stuff. Smells great. Not a bit like glue. Well, it's good to have a lot of paper towel handy. Just a lot of it. So we gotta let that kind of set for a few seconds. While it does that, we'll have a drink. I'd say that's set. So, this is my burnisher. This is a, uh, a drawer pull handle from a drawer. It's quite old. I put it into a exacto handle, and the groove is perfect. So I just start rubbing the edge until it smooths it down, and it'll burnish it to a, a high gloss finish. And it depends on how far you want to go with it. You can go quite a ways. 
I don't see the need to go too crazy on it. After all, I usually give these things away or sell them for like five bucks, so I'm not investing a lot of time. What it does do, it compresses the leather, so it squishes out on the edges. So you need to flatten the edges. Now use the handle. And you just lay it on my granite and flatten it out. on this granite. Don't buy granite blocks from freaking Tandy or anything like that. I go to my local granite stone cutter in town and get them for five bucks. Tandy leather charges about forty. It's like no, that's bullshit. Don't do that. Okay. So I've treated the edge. Now we need to. level it, figure out where the hole is going to go, and put a hole in it. Now I use a hole punch, I have like seven or eight of these things because I go through them like poop through a goose, because they don't last long. It's a hole punch. I'm going to pick a spot, to put a hole, that looks good. Make sure the bottom is level. Squeeze, a little twist, pull it apart. Oh, it won't come apart. Now, don't worry that the leather's a little floppy at this point. It'll always be a little floppy. It didn't go all the way through, so we'll fix that. Again, these leather punches, I don't care how much money you spend on them. They're basically disposable. Okay, so I have the hole. That's going to accommodate either a buckle or a rivet, depending on what I want to do. With this one, oh, let's do a buckle. So I have a whole kit of buckles. And you have the shiny part. And you have the flat part. I use two shiny parts because I don't like the looks of those flat parts and then you have your male you can't see that in your female and then you have your peen and then that's that's actually called a peen and this is called an anvil Anybody who's done any amount of riveting will know a peen from an anvil or whatever. Every country has a different name. In Canada, it's a peen and an anvil. And if there's people in Canada who disagree with me, then they've never set as many effing rivets as I have. Because I'm a boat builder by trade, and we rivet everything. Everything is riveted. So... Your peen has a little dimple on it, and you have to do a kind of a circular motion as you. Now I'm not hitting hard; very light taps, and I'm doing a. I'm rolling it in a circular motion because I'm splitting the metal, and as it splits, it flares out. And when you get near the end, give it a good smack. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but I have a good solid connection and we'll do the same on the other side now here's the problem when you're using the shiny bits with the male bits the male bits the male bits are shorter shanked so what I do is I take the leather say yeah and I give it a little smack just to thin it out a, just a little bit just enough Push that through, squeeze it down tight. Gonna put the mail on and make sure you have you look and you have enough room, you have enough material coming through. You can do your peen. Okay, I'm doing a bit of a circular motion. When I'm 
satisfied, I'll give it a smack. You have your button. Nice, satisfying click. Shape it. Now I'm going to, you can oil that or wax it or dye it or whatever you want. But there it is. There's a pipe stand. And I hope you enjoyed this video. It's my first instructional video that I've ever done and it sucks and I understand that. But hey, it's all fun and games till someone puts an eye up. We'll see you guys.